Hi, this is uh, Kirk from Forex Trade Secrets, and what we want to talk to you today about is how to go from 0 to 50 pips a day and tell you the full story. How did this whole thing get started that we've been working on for uh, over 11, 12 years? Some of the topics we'll be, be covering, not in, in great detail, but just so you get a, an idea of what, what it's all about. We determine the direction of the trend for a trade and there's also counter trend trades and how do you do the setup for that what does it look like on a counter trend and a trade that is going in a trend there's the uh, five scans we use the 15 5 and 1 minute time frames and you can use the larger time frames as well but we have five scans specifically set up for for this and we'll show you what those look like and then there's a setup First of all, you want the 15 minute to do something, and then you look for the 5 and 1 setups, and that's where you're going to get more uh, accuracy and timing on your entries. There's default stop losses we talk about. Uh, daily pip targets. In this uh, course, if you have a daily pip target, and once you reach it, you don't need to necessarily stop trading that day, but at least you've met your goal. If you go higher, fine. If you're a little bit less than that, that's okay. The next day you start over and try and shoot for that goal again. How to figure the lot sizes. This is what makes the difference in whether you make a money or not in trading. If you can be consistent in the way you trade, and so you're over a period of time, your winning trades are bigger than your losing trades, then the lot size is going to make it to where you actually make money rather than you just go through the motions how to increase the lot size and there's calculations for that maximize the number of trades that you should take at one time and how to choose currency pairs to trade and the pairs that move the most talk about that how to tell if a trade is fresh or not how to tell if a trade is late those two things are the cause of most people's uh, losing is they enter too late or else they get in and the trade's already exhausted. That would be getting in late, too late also. Uh, just knowing when the, when the trade is going to be fresh. Highest probability trade setups. We'll review some of those. And two ways to manage your trades. That is the, the stop losses. And we talk about, we're not going to necessarily go in detail about the moving averages, but we use the moving averages. So, we're going to be going over how the course started then how it grew and became what it is today. Let me go back and tell you uh, in 2006 I started working for a brokerage firm and it was like every two or three months these people were coming out with a new course uh, totally new. Then the next month uh, the end of the new one and it looked like they were just trying to sell things. They weren't trying to teach people how to trade but people started asking us how to, to, to teach them how to trade and so we started working on the material that we were using and putting it in a format that we could share with people and we've been using that same material for about 11 plus years we added to it but we didn't ever change it the basis is there and we're going to show you briefly how that uh, takes place so we haven't created a new strategy every few months just to have something new to sell to you we want you to become good at what uh, we are uh, presenting. And so this is why you can make more pips in a short period of time with less risk. So let's go to the charts right off the bat and let's uh, check into some of these things. This is Launchpad. This is what we started with. Now I've drawn a vertical line right here. This is a 15 minute chart. Now this was uh, during uh, our uh, pip club trading session yesterday. And then Let's take a look at that. It's really not that exciting. You may not be uh, able to see anything from that, but let's look at this five minute. Okay, the five minute starts giving you some more information. Okay, we start seeing crosses of zero lines right here. Uh, fresh color changes. These moving averages open up. Now let's go to the one minute. Now we see a nice move. Okay, right in here, retracement. So that's what it looks like with just launch pad. And you can start seeing when this indicator crosses that zero line that's critical that's important Been back above and then it crossed going again well how do you know whether you should take the trade when it's crossing above or when it crossed going below that'll become more apparent as we move along but let's go to the nth degree this is after adding 
a couple of indicators. We added some fractals and uh, an indicator here at the bottom. So this is the same place. Now you start seeing some, some colors that are making some difference. This indicator tells you which direction you should be trading. If this is below that zero line, that's the direction you should be trading. If we're above, then you'd want to be trading long. So because of this being below, we would know that that's where we should be trading. Now let's look at the five minute. Okay, does it start uh, seeing more color here? We have red, red, and we have all these reds up here. Okay, that's what we call a zone. And if you can trade in that zone, but let's go to the one minute. The one minute's used just to time the entries, not necessarily to uh, totally um, trade it. I like to, I told you I'd talk about one thing that I like to do as far as managing the trades. Enter the trade on the one minute for timing, but manage it on the five minute. Okay, so there was a, a move here, and then there was another move that started right here. We'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. So I'm staying on the same currency pair, the same section, so you can kind of see how the, the course evolved. Now, let's go to what it is today. We've added uh, one more indicator at the bottom. We've added a moving average. Let me show up here. Now, we have this is red. Now, this is a, it's all the same indicator that we had before, but it's a two-color indicator. So now we have we call it an early bird filter. That was uh, changed colors and this indicator and this indicator were the same color. All three of those becomes an early bird filter. On the correct side of this moving average we know that we would be looking for short trades. Now let's go to the five minute. We start seeing that there's a trade set up right there. Now that's what we call a four bar these indicators, uh, if you notice, they're all bars, histograms, but they look like bars, so we call them a four bar. There's four of them in a row that are all the same color. That means something. It's crossing below the zero line. It is below the zero line, and it just crossed below the zero line. That's a strong point. So that would be an area that you could uh, consider taking a trade, but it was based on this early bird filter right up here, and we know the direction. That confirmed it because it as soon as it became a four bar, and the one minute needs to be a four bar as well. And so probably right on that second one right there, where that crossed, and that was a definite cross, and that was a cross. This one is above that t moving average, that um, turquoise moving average. That's why I would wait till this one. And right there, if you'd taken that trade, there was 20 pips right there in that portion of it. Then, now I'm going to show you another thing. This is where you start. We talked about how to get to up to 50 pips in a day. Okay, if that was only uh, a 20 pip trade, well, you need to take more trades. Well, you've done all the work on this currency pair. Right here, we would uh, be entering a trade. And then right here is another four bar. And that's called a saddle. When you have the trend already going and you're saddled, that's a place you could add on to it. Well, you take one trade here. If you'd gotten out, you could get back in. So if you'd done that method, there was 20 pips. And there was another uh, 25 pips. And there's ex exit signals. An exit signal would be, and I'll, look, I'll, I'll show you how to look at that on the uh, another time frame. But right there, there's a four bar going back in the opposite direction. That's a heads up. Hey, maybe it's time to get out of that trade. Right there. Now, let's look at the five minute time frame. Okay, this is the area we're looking at in that five minute. The heads up on the five minute is when this filter indicator, that's what we call it, the filter indicator, changes colors. If it has the mayo and the filter are, are the same, that's heads up. Maybe you ought to consider getting out of the trade because there are momentum indicators. The momentum is changing. So we showed you what it looked like at, at, at the exit end right here. That was a heads up to tell you, okay, that move is about over. 
and for sure when that crosses that zero line again then you want to be out because it's taking this little retracement now let's go back to that one minute again I'm going to put another line right here so it says to get out well maybe what about consider getting back in again uh, there was a four bar right here you may want to wait till it crossed that moving average. So right in here someplace there's a four bar right there. That would be the safe place to get in. There's another 20 pips. And guess what? It went back down again. Let's see over here. There's another saddle. And if you had time to trade this, you've already done the research on it. And so there's 40 pips. And we said this was 20 pips and this was 20 and 20 roughly so there's 40 pips a lot of pips in just a short period of time on one currency pair so I want to go into a little more detail here how do you determine the direction of the trend use the 15 minute and determine which side of that uh, moving average the price bars are on that tells you which direction you should be trading if it's crossing above, you know, look at the overall trend. You need to kind of use some some common sense also. Uh, you don't just all of a sudden jump because the 15 minutes said that it uh, was taking a retracement right there. You can possibly trade in this area, but you have to have all the other indicators lined up to, to take that, but then it came, comes back in your favor. Counter trend trades. Obviously right here there was a news announcement and it moved down sharply it got a long ways away from this moving average the price bars moved a long ways away and so what do we start looking for there's an early bird filter but on counter trend trades I prefer a four bar and when the filter goes above the zero line a four bar after a big separation from the moving average that's where we'd start looking now this is a 50 minute chart now let's go to the 5 and see what that looks like. Now we also talked about how to time entries and setups on the 5 and the 1. That's what I'm doing now. No matter what the 15 minute tells you as to what you determine you want to do, the 5 and the 1 need to be 4 bars. And there was a 4 bar right there. Here's a stronger 4 bar in that all of these indicators are on the correct same side. So this would be a safer move. It's a 20 pip move. Yes, if you know what you're doing, you can trade that whole section there. This would be your safer move over here. Now, let's mark that one for the one minute. You want to wait until the one minute is a four bar. Uh, I prefer to have them all on the same side. Uh, right in here is where we get them all on the same side. Yes, it went in your favor, came back to a broad break even, then took off. But here's where you, let's move over to that other one that we marked. See, this was a safer trade over here. They didn't pull back against you. It went to uh, 8 pips, didn't come back to 0, went up to 8 pips again, didn't come back, and then it started taking off, and you had a nice trade there. So, people say to me all the time, well, you're looking back in history. Well, let me ask you this question. Can you tell when things change colors? If you can't, then you're colorblind or you need to change the colors that you use. These colors I use, the red and blue, are just because I like them. It's not that they're the only ones you can use. Okay, let me just see if you can tell what happened right here. See right there? That's black, which is a buy signal. Blue, blue, blue. Can you see that right as it's forming? Did you have to see everything else out past that? No, you didn't have to see everything out past that. Let's look at the, move this anchor over, and we're going to look at the 15 minute. What did the 15 minute tell you? It's all it's, Everything's blue. It says, well, that's the direction you should be trading. The 15 minute said trade long. This is a counter trend it come out of it. This is halfway up. We could have been looking down here also. But what I want you to see is you can see these colors as they develop. They are all of a sudden all blue or they're all red. If they're flickering, that's a signal also. What does that tell you? 
it tells you you may be out of weight until it's a solid color but the mark is not stable yet and that's just a matter of practice so I don't want anyone to send me an email and say well you're looking back in history well I did but I also take trades based on what I see right here I'm looking back in history to show you that there was a trade there for 20 some odd pips was it a fast moving trade no it moved pretty good in the beginning but then it just kinda trickled along but it still turned out to be 18 20 pip move so that's a counter trend setup and we talked about what you set up on the 15 and the 5 and the 1 could you use the one hour? Yes. Some people say, well, use the 30, 15, and 5. Yes, you can do that. Sometimes this one minute gets a little bit too noisy. And that's why we jump up to the, fifth, uh, to the 5 to manage. Let's look at the one hour. Let me mark. Well, I have that uh, marked right there. So go to the one hour. That's right in here. What if you were looking at that one hour and you saw that? become a what? A four bar saddle. For sure you know that's the direction you should be trading. There's a hundred pips right there. If you'd been at, at the market, this is a European session and you could have taken a lot of pips there based on that. Look at the one hour saddles. What about a daily pip target? What did we talk about? What's the title of this session? It's zero to fifty. Well, you're not going to all of a sudden you start trading and make 50 pips. Yeah, that takes a little bit of skill. It doesn't have to be very long before you get to that point. But start out at maybe 10 pips a day. Move it to 15, 20, 30, 40, and up to 50. You can get there relatively quickly in just a few months. How to figure the lot sizes. I'm not going to tell you how to figure them here, but I'm going to tell you our theory behind the lot sizes. If you're consistent and being able to find trades and take trades you can see that when you get to the one minute it's easy to find entries and then you manage on the five then you're going to get to the maximum number of pips but how do you figure that lot size well if what if you're making 10 pips a day and you're using a dime well you made uh, what a dollar what if you're trading one standard lot which is ten dollars and used a dime. Well, you just made a hundred dollars. See how much difference that lot size makes? Now you have to use wisdom in what you're doing and there's a way to calculate it so you keep it in perspective all the time in the, the size of your account. But then what if you start making trading that ten dollars and you start making twenty pips, thirty pips, forty, fifty pips, hundred dollars a day or make five hundred dollars a day with very little extra effort by taking one currency pair watching what it does how it moves now this pattern is not unique it happens every day some point in time and you find things like this and I'll show you examples of trades that uh, have been taken and we have calculations how to increase those lot sizes maybe you want to start out smaller and increase it as your confidence level grows and as your accuracy and consistency grows now how do you choose the currency pairs to trade well I'll tell you what I do I trade anything that uses the pound or the euro that gives me this section here but then I use the US yen and the US CAD are the only other two that I trade the reason I use those is because they move the most these move also but if you have a currency pair that's only moving 60 pips a day versus one that's moving 160 pips a day which one do you think is going to give you the most pips for the same amount of work the ones I mentioned that's why I trade those you don't have to trade those but you can decide how you want to, to do it how do you find the pairs that are moving well you look for the setups if we looked at all the pairs a few of them this time were moving but not all of them were moving and so when you get the setup you hone in on two or three pairs and maybe you go down to one and stick with that one or maybe two and you might have several trades on that one pair or those two pairs but that's how you decide what you're going to trade it's not the same pairs every day it might be the pound Aussie uh, one day 
and it might be the pound the CAD or the Euro CAD the next day or the yen pairs may be the ones that are moving and so you look through until you find those that are moving okay how do you tell when a trade is fresh or not well after you hit a saddle or a color change that's fresh again I mean, it was stayed on the same side and kept on going up yeah it did a little bit of corrective move here but this is the indicator that really tells you the strength these others might change color this one will stay solid so as long as that's the same color as up here you can pretty well stay in that trade up up there that tells you how to stay in how do you tell if it's fresh well when it crossed the zero line that's fresh when it had a saddle that's fresh let's use this one didn't have a saddle it was more of an up and down that's fresh right there but you have a saddle four bar saddle it's fresh when it crosses zero lines if it goes more than four bars one two three four that's where I start wondering where it would become fresh again right here see now it's a four bar again so that freshens it up and it took off again so when these color changes that tells where they're fresh this had been going for a while but that became fresh again so you could have taken a trade there you could there's another trade there and that's not fresh it's fresh when it crosses your line fresh when it had a saddle there's several things to tell you whether things are fresh or not and the same thing is how to tell if the trade is late highest probability trade setup I've been talking about it all morning long it's right here it's a four bar saddle on the correct side of that 34 moving average that's a high probability trade it's on the correct side of that moving average that's a high probability trade four bars we talked about managing the, the trade a couple of ways to manage you manage it on the five minute when you get a four bar going back the opposite direction or when it crosses above this zero line right here so you could enter it over here and not taking this ride sideways and you still got out uh, about the same point so a fresh cross on the filter or a four bar going in the opposite direction that says hey it's time to get out the trade is over that move is stopped and we use uh, there's three moving averages there's two moving averages here and there's a third one right there notice when these cross that helps you to tell the momentum's picking up in that direction with all the colors so you have the indicators opening up on the correct side of this moving average and all the colors so it's all straightforward if you at first glance think wow it's so complicated there's so much stuff that what I've just shown you here we have a full course it's called the nth degree that takes a few weeks to go through if you really put a lot of time into because there's a lot of material that's good foundational but you can start making money using this within one or two days because of the way we've been able to to teach people now we're seeing that uh, they can do it more quickly the four bar and saddles that other information is very helpful if you have that you'll even make more money than you will by just doing what we're doing here as I mentioned before okay I'm just gonna go through quickly on this section these are some uh, a couple of different traders over the period of time when I made this uh, presentation a few months ago uh, they, these are the trades that they took for a week or maybe a, a little bit more than a week uh, one made 17 one made 33 so you just keep looking at those and see these are the pips that they actually made so I see that uh, some days they were making a lot or a little it changes every day is different it depends on what's happening but uh, this is before we even started talking about adding on to one currency pair so here are some trade examples okay here's one example this one trade it was 90 pips this is a five minute chart is 39 pips on a five minute chart see where he started getting out I talked about these color changes taking place 
195 pips on a five minute chart. They do happen. And the 195s don't happen as much. Now here's these illustrations are showing positions that were taken. The first position, the second position, and a third position. Three times that uh, was entered. They were closed at different times, but they made 37, 36, and 7. See, there's your 50 pips in one section here. Right here, another move. Three trades. Look at the size of those trades. That's, uh, you know, hundreds of pips per day on this one trade. So, be patient, wait for the proper setup, enter the trades, and you can trade just like this. Okay, here's a 28 pip move from right here down to there. What's wrong with this picture here? The other trade, I told you about the ideal setup, the saddle. The other trade wasn't taken here. There was only an extra 15 pips, but if you add those all together, that's 43 pips in one currency pair. There's another currency pair that did almost identically, exactly the same thing, but it would have made 60 pips by taking the two trades. So if you'd just been trading two currency pairs, any of those things, there's over 100 pips right there. That's how you go from 0 to 50 pips. You learn the signals and you add on to a trend. If it's on the correct side of these moving averages, well, you know which way you're trading. Just add on, uh, add another trade, and keep on going. And when it tells you to get out, close the trades. This is a trading strategy that you can use to actually make money. We've had people tell us that they were making money in just a couple of days, and they had to get better. They they would lose, and they get over confident. And, but they were making money when they st stuck to the basic simple strategy and not try to, to be too aggressive with it. Just wait for it to come to you. Traders that only have the 1551 or the 15 strategy trading cores are actually making money. But those people who have the uh, nth degree trading cores and the 15 strategy cores, they're even making more money. So. If you were to buy the course, the 15 5 and 1 strategy, or the 15 is what we call it, it's straightforward, it's easy to learn, two days. You can learn it in two days, but you can watch the videos in two hours or less. Specific trading setups to look for, entries and exits, step by step method of trading using the lot size, the pip counts. The whole thing, it's a step by step. There's no guessing as to what to do. And you can get your copy of the 15 trading strategy course for only $500. What do you get for that? You get the complete course, you get two months of the scanner. Now, I haven't said anything about the scanner yet, but let me bring that scanner over for you. Here's the scanner. I've checked these two boxes here saying that on I want the 15 minute to show me an early bird filter or four bars. And you have two of them going here. Can this be done manually? Yes. It's what it does is it brings more trades to your attention because you're going to miss some if you don't have something to bring to your attention. But you can find them on your own. I've taught you everything you need to know before we even got to the scanner, which is bringing these things to your attention. There are five different setups here on the 15. The five minute, one minute are all the same. Okay, you get two months of that. And if you'd like, you can get some, some coaching along with that. But we have a bonus. This is the first time this has ever been offered. And those of you who have purchased the scanner in the last couple of months will uh, send me an email and you will get this bonus. With this offer, you will get the complete nth degree trading course. That in itself is sold for 10 years at $500. And so we're giving that as part of this whole package. What did I say earlier? People that are using the scanner and the nth degree course, or the, uh, the 15 course, are making money. 
people that have the nth degree along with that are even making more. We're giving you more videos than you can watch in a month. These videos right here will take you a good three weeks to, to really digest, that to become good at them. So I would say watch the others first, come back to these, and it'll all start to make sense to you. A lot of material. This has been, uh, we've had many, many people make a lot of money using the nth degree, and we're having more people very quickly making more money using the 15 cores. So to get your copy of the link, just click on it, this link below. If you have any questions, then you can contact Jed or myself. It's best to do it by email, and uh, then you can start actually making pips. If you just want the scanner only, and you don't want to pay the $500, you can just pay $100 a month and get the scanner and the 15 course materials, as long as you pay the, the $100 a month. It's what you get with the paying the $500, is you get the N3 course, and you only have to pay $50 a month for the scanner to get the alerts. Okay, uh, right now the offer is you're paying the $500 for these uh, the 15 cores and get two months of the scanner. After that two months you have to pay $50 a month to maintain the scanner and still get the indicators. But you will get the nth degree course and we have charged for over 10 years $500 and so if you decide not to keep the scanner you still get to keep the nth degree course so you do get to keep a value